have a date with the angel. Starring Betty White. Bill Williams as Gus Angel. The time, five months after Vicky and Gus Angel were married. The main character, one stork. The plot, rockabye boo-boo. <laughs> gives long reassuring talks to new mothers when babies get close. Oh. Mr. Clemson and my husband are picking us up here. You're gonna take us to lunch. That's all for today, Mrs. Clemson. Now remember, stay on the protein diet with an occasional bit of cuddle bone. Cuddle bone? <laughs> for the stork. <laughs> Vicky, Dr. Gordon says only three more weeks. About. And that's barring any unscheduled flights. Oh, honey, that's wonderful. Wilma, did, uh, did you tell Dr. Gordon what we were talking about? Uh, Dr. Gordon, in the last month or two, George has become quite nervous. But you've seen him. Yes, yes, I have. We have a medical term for his condition. He's coming unglued. <laughs> check to make sure you really went to medical school. <laughs> yes, I heard that. I understood he was very much upset when he found that I graduated fifth in my class. <laughs> he wondered if they could get the four ahead of me. <laughs> well, do you think you might talk to him, Doctor? I love him, but he's wearing me out with attention. Can't you see that idea is plain stupid? I'm telling you, Gus, I don't trust that elevator. Oh, hi, Doc. Hi. Hello, Mother. Hello, Gus. Hello, hi, sweetheart. Hi. Now, what's this about the elevator? Well, uh, this is an old building, and I, and I don't want Wilma riding that elevator. That thing's on its last legs. How's she going to get downstairs? Well, she can lean on me, and we'll walk down. <laughs> Eleven flights? <laughs> I just don't want her all joggled up. That's all. Right? Well, I'm all joggled up just thinking about it. Oh. Uh, I'm sorry, Doc. I I'm not myself these days. <laughs> uh, Doc, <laughs> I didn't mean that, and I, I forgot my manners completely. <laughs> Good to see you, Doc. Good to see you. Uh, hi, Vicky. Oh. Uh, hi, Gus. Nice to see you again. Thank you. George. Dr. Gordon says George Jr. will be here in about three weeks. Catch him. Well, that's all the more reason to be careful. we got to find a doctor. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, Doc. I didn't mean that. You know that. It's not that I don't trust you. Oh, I know. It's just that you don't have a, a doctor friend, do you? I... You see, I thought maybe that, that both of you... Uh, Mr. Clemson, I have a little book that I want you to take home and read. It's called What to Expect of the Expectant Father. Now, come on. <laughs> Boy, he's a mess. <laughs> I guess waiting 14 years for your first child gives you a right to be. <laughs> this is the worst I've ever seen him. Oh, you should see him at home. <laughs> Dr. Gordon will simmer him down. For now on, you let us do the worrying. All right. Gus, we've got to do something. Well, maybe we can think of something down at the office. All the boys do is talk about the baby anyway. <laughs> You'll find some excellent advice in there for the first time, Father. Thoughtful consideration should be the keynote. With no heavy-handed efforts at being helpful where help is neither needed nor wanted. Now, that makes sense. Honey, you shouldn't be lifting heavy things. <laughs> Doc, if she doesn't take care of herself, I'm going to. So long, Doc. Good See you later. Honey. Come on, honey, let's go. Thank you, Dr. Easy now. Gordon. Come on, honey. Walk and down all those plums. It'll be easy. She's not safe for him. Come on. Oh, and remember, Mr. Clemson, we've never lost a father yet. <laughs> but I'd be willing to try. <laughs> I tell you, women just don't realize what a father goes through. First, he's happy, and he's miserable, and he doesn't trust anybody, and finally just becomes numb like that. Like that. If I had it to do over again, I'd take the diaper service. <laughs> Wilma's mother's gonna be here for a week or so. She can do that. 
Uh-uh. You just can't let that grandmother thing get out of hand. I'll buy that, Carl. Those grandmas are murder. <laughs> when I had my baby... <clears throat> Eve's little tiny mother turned up and turned into a regular Julius Caesar. Oh, <laughs> How about when your own mother shows up? Oh. 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 The two mothers team up with your wife and the three of them throw you right out of the house. <laughs> Sounds like the easiest thing is having the baby. Just don't ever say it's easy, Gus. <laughs> You've no idea how I suffered. You know Eve was in there darn near two hours? Naturally, it was a boy. <laughs> Somewhere I heard that the first one usually is a boy, is it? Always, always. What do you mean, always? Just what I said, always. Well, how can you say always? Well, you read well, any medical journal. Well, 50% of people journal, are girls, Any they? medical journal will tell but you that the first always. one. I'm not going through with it. <laughs> it's a little late to back out now, George. <laughs> Besides, it'll be the first office baby. <laughs> Go ahead, George. We all want to be uncles. <laughs> all right. Oh, well... Oh. <clears throat> Shall I have tea sent in, gentlemen? Oh, I couldn't eat a thing. <laughs> George, try to get your mind off the baby and onto your work. <laughs> you think no one around here ever had a child before? Well, as we were saying, sir, it is the first office, baby. Yes, I know, but I don't like to see business come to a complete standstill for personal matters. I understand, sir. How, how's Wilma holding up? George seems to be her main problem. He's so worried about her that she just isn't getting the rest she should get. She has to put up with it for three more weeks, sir. Three weeks? Yes, sir. I was going to ask either you or Kenny to run down to San Diego for a couple of days on that Sheffield account. But it might simplify things to send Clemson. He'd never go, sir. He has no choice. Clemson! It's routine fire insurance. He can't possibly do anything wrong. And it's only a half an hour's flying time if Wilma should really need him. <laughs> uh, Clemson, uh, Angel's in a bit of a bind on that Sheffield deal down in San Diego, so uh, I'm sending you. Thank you. Oh, you'll be handle, able to handle it easily. It, it, it's a simple thing for you. After all, you're one of the best men I've got. I'm doing everything Vicky tells me. How's San Diego? I'm sure it'll be a boy. <laughs> Honey, if I didn't like the name George, I never would have married you. Well, take the pills Dr. Gordon gave you. <laughs> George, honey, we have four numbers where we can reach you. Bye. <laughs> You're still pretty excited. Well, men are supposed to get excited at a time like this. <laughs> I think it's sweet of him to call so often. Nine times in 24 hours? <laughs> oh, I just hope he calms down after George Jr. comes. <laughs> Well, if he doesn't, just give him the baby and let him walk the floor. <laughs> Good idea. Thanks, then. Oh, Vicki, I'm so glad somebody's calm. <laughs> I just wish you could stay right here till the baby arrives. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Anything special you feel like for dinner? Hmm. <laughs> Dr. Gordon said you needed plenty of protein and lots of quiet. <laughs> Guess we'd better find you some quiet protein. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Wilma? <laughs> Vicki, I think we'd better go to the hospital. <laughs> All right. Now, you sit right there. And I'll, um, your hospital bag's all packed. I'll call the doctor, and we'll get the car out, and we'll be on our way. Before we left the house, did you call... Honey, I let them know we were coming. Well, no, I didn't mean to... What I meant was, did you really call... I called the doctor and I let them know down at the office. Now, you sit right here and relax. 
Miss, uh, nurse. <coughs> no, then. I called about 20 minutes ago, Mrs. Clemson. Name? Clemson. Oh, Wilma. Wilma Clemson. Is it spelled with an E or an O? Oh, E. Oh, and there's an O, too, at the end. C-L-E-M-S-O-N. Address? 717 West Guthrie Avenue. Would it be possible to hurry just a little? You... Excuse me. Now, who is the doctor, please? Franklin P. Gordon. Why, Dr. Gordon is an obstetrician. Well, yes. Yeah. We're going to have a baby any minute. Oh, well, you didn't tell me it was a maternity case. <laughs> oh, maternity cases have to be registered on the blue card. <laughs> Name? Wilma Clemson. And, Jiggy, you had it all done on this card. <laughs> Let's be calm, shall we? It's so important. Now then, father's name? George Clemson. Spelled the same way. <laughs> and that address was, um, he's in San Diego. Oh, George. The address, please. Wilma. Oh, uh, 717 West Guthrie Avenue. Are you all right, sweetie? I'm fine. Doctor? No, 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 I'm fine. <laughs> this is Mrs. Clemson and her friend, Miss Weissman. How do you do? 112 hasn't rung the buzzer for 10 minutes. Well, that's a record for him, isn't it? Buzzer's broken. Uh -huh. 125 checked out and left a box of candy for us. Oh, that's nice of her. Are you all right, Wilma? Oh, she's fine. Oh. Come with me, Mrs. Clemson. Well, Vicky. Wilma. Wilma. Bye. Reverse the charges. Of course. Well, oh, please. Mom, guess what he is, a boy or a girl? <laughs> How'd you guess? Eight pounds. And there's a lady outside the booth here, and even she looks stunned. <laughs> uh, uh, call Dad, will you, Mom? He's a giant. Is the baby born yet? I mean, uh, did Mrs. Clemson get here all right? And now then. <laughs> what? Whom did you wish to see? Mrs. Clemson. She's having one of your babies. Maternity to the left. Thanks. We're having more put in. Thank you. Across the street if you're in a hurry. This 
this one's a father for the first time. He's calling people who don't even know he's married. But Mr. Clemson's in San Diego. He'll make it. I have nine kids, and when they called me for the seventh, I was in Phoenix. Got here in time to read Gone with the Wind. <laughs> but I didn't call Mr. Clemson at all. Excuse me. If Mrs. Clemson needs me, I'll, I'll be across the street. <laughs> That'll be fine. Oh, Vicki! Gus! Gus, I've done a terrible thing. I forgot to call George. He should be here to have this baby, and, and I, nobody called him. Sure they did. When you called me, I told Ross to call him. You did? Sure, and you should see the excitement down at the office. Oh, darling, <laughs> what would I ever do without oh. you? You just can't imagine the relief. Re what do you well, say? I'll have to ask you to keep your voices down. How's Wilma? Uh, any word on Mrs. Clemson while I was gone? <sighs> Nothing further. <laughs> oh, sweetheart, she was so brave. I wish you could have seen her. And, and, and that gentleman right over there had an eight-pound boy, and he's telling everybody... Oh, and I want you to meet Mr. Davenport. Mr. Davenport, this is my husband. <laughs> the name's Nemeth. I told her I sell furniture. <laughs> Mr. Nemeth. Mr. Nemeth's been so kind. He, he lent me money for the phone, and, and he's sure George is going to get here in time. And he's the father of nine children, and... Nine? Going on ten. <laughs> and as long as you've told George, there's nothing to worry about. <laughs> Except Wilma. <laughs> Do you realize you're in a hospital? <laughs> now then, whom did you wish to see? Mrs. George Ignatius Clemson. Now I'll take your name. Uh, Thompson. Well, Nurse Thompson, I'm going to see the superintendent. Here, where are you letting that go to? Thank you. Come back here. Well, uh, Ross, I didn't know it was you. The heck you didn't. Why are we being detained? Whom did you wish to see? Mrs. Clemson, please. Maternity? To the left. Well, now, I could have told him that. Her name is Thompson. When this thing is all over, I'm going to come to the superintendent. Yes, I tell you, I'm perfectly all right. And tell them to stop looking at me. Uh, come on, honey, let's get some more water, huh? Come on, add a girl. The walk will do you good. I don't want any more water. A little bit more. <laughs> If Vicky knew how they ran these hospitals, she'd stop worrying. How do you mean? Well, we've been here for over an hour, and I guarantee you that baby was born 20 minutes ago. Hmm? Who told you that? Well, it stands to reason, Vicky. Look, Wilma isn't the only patient here, and they can't come charging out here and tell us every time a new baby is born. Oh, sure. They save them up till they have a nice big fat batch, then they announce them all at once. <laughs> Dr. Gordon would let us know right away, wouldn't he? Well, it's been my experience. They notify you as quickly as possible. Ha! What does he know? <laughs> Carl, don't start making up stories just to try to make me feel good. Now, stuff. Vicki, I've studied this whole thing in medical journals, I know, and I, I know... I have to ask you to keep your voices down. <laughs> just the same, Vicki. I can tell you with some authority, because I've had two children... <sighs> It can't be much longer. An hour's a long time. That's good to know. Thank you, Ross. Mm -hmm. Feel better, sweetheart. I can't Fernity. Oh, Dr. Gordon. Will you be here soon? He isn't even here. Dr. James said Mrs. Clemson will be ready for you shortly. Fine, doctor. Mrs. Clemson's doing nicely. The doctor will be here in plenty of time. Oh, good. Now, just don't you worry. <laughs> well, I guess that takes care of everybody. My old scoutmaster really took it big. <laughs> How did your wife's parents take it? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Incidentally, Ross, what did George say when he heard the news? Well, I wish I'd heard him. What did he say? How should I know? What was his reaction, Gus? <laughs> Didn't anybody call George? Well, Ross, you, you were said you were going to... Oh, thanks for the tip. 
Long distance? There's a bulletproof no, machine. I don't know. Well, maybe Mr. Malcolm. Oh, Mr. Malcolm, do you know that the angels forgot to notify Clemson? It wasn't Vicky's fault. Well, somebody should have done it. Gentlemen, gentlemen, please. I notified Clemson naturally. I called him the minute just told me. Oh, well, that was real executive thinking. Yes, sir, I go along with Ross on that, sir. That was real executive... Thompson, this is Weissman in maternity. Don't let any more through for Clemson. I've got all I can handle. <laughs> right. 86 on the Clemson. <laughs> It's all right. I'm the fellow you're expecting. And now then, who did you wish to see? Wilma. Wilma who? No, Wilma Clemson. Oh, Clemson. Wait right over there, please. Good evening, Nurse Thompson. Well, now, Doctor. Clemson, what are you doing in here? Well, how do I know? <laughs> Mr. Clemson, this is the father? One look should have told you. <laughs> Come along. <laughs> I wonder how Wilma is. Honey, don't pet to the nurse anymore. I won't. Mrs. Clemson is fine. Nurse, I mean this constructively. I happen to know where Dr. Gordon's office is, and it shouldn't take him any hour and a half to get here. It's been barely ten minutes since I talked to him. I came in with him a while ago, and he looks a little peaky. <laughs> oh, nurse, is Dr. Gordon here? The doctor has been here for quite a while. Why, there you see, boy. <laughs> She's going to love these flowers. <laughs> Wait a minute. We have just welcomed two beautiful twin girls into the world. Oh. Now, George, congratulations. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Could I see Mrs. Nemeth now? Come with me. We'll see. <laughs> Come on now, Vicky. This won't get you anywhere. I've had a lot of experience of falling apart lately. I know. <laughs> That's right. Besides, the twins belong to the other fellow. And look how calmly he took it. Vicky. <laughs> Mr. Clemson, your wife has just presented you with a fine seven-pound boy. Both she and the child are doing splendidly. You'll be able to see them in just a little while. <laughs> Thank you. When I read that book, I told myself I'd not be a typical father. Now, if one of you guys will take each arm and hold me up, I won't fall on the floor. I don't want anybody to be able to tell that kid in there that his father fell on the floor when he was born. Oh, <laughs> Congratulations. Honey? Oh, sweetie, I'll never be able to go through this. Oh, yes, you will. Someday. Uh -oh. Got a date with an angel. Gonna meet her at seven. 
got a date with an angel and I'm on my way to heaven. Plymouth dealer invites you to watch the Lawrence Welk program Top Tunes and You Tell It on the same network. And the dramatic show Climax every week on another network. Tom Kennedy speaking. Good night, everybody.